Okay, Dave, we've moved around to the front of the vehicle. Now I know a lot has changed under the hood of the Prius. And the first thing that, that I would identify <laughs> is where this, uh, this lives now. Yeah, your prop ride is kind of, it's got a little bit of a stealth mounting point, doesn't it? Uh, another thing, Danny, did you notice how light this hood felt? Yeah. We're still making the hoods and the rear hatches out of aluminum as we have for the last couple of generations. So that's something that hasn't changed. <laughs> it's not quite in our category, but I just want to let, it, let you know that we're still doing that on those two important uh, components here to save weight. You've got to save weight where you can. Absolutely. So walk us through the, the engine compartment. I can already identify one of the biggest changes. That's that 12 volt battery. Absolutely. The 12 volt battery has moved up under the hood out of your cargo compartment as we saw out back. Also notice the size of the battery now too. It's actually a real, you know, good sized car battery mm -hmm. instead of a smaller battery, which I think is going to be much more robust when it comes to parking your vehicle for maybe a couple weeks when you're traveling, you know, and, and the car is still looking for the smart key periodically, another parasitic electrical draw. <laughs> this battery will be much more resistant to that. But in the end, let's talk about how we were able to do this because this really was one of our, our big achievements on the car. It's a little difficult to see, but I'm going to start at the top and work down because the inverter is right here, our power control unit. And if you look at the previous generations and you look at the new one here, there's a couple things that are different. First and foremost, this new inverter is about one third smaller than its predecessor. It's lighter and it's also more efficient. Do you see any orange cabling running around under the hood here? <laughs> no, I don't. And that's a different thing. We have a new transmission assembly underneath that and it is mounted directly to that. The high voltage connections are made directly. By losing the cable, we reduce electrical resistance in this system between the cabling and the box. We reduce our electrical current loss to heat, so we get more efficiency out of this too. Some revised cooling also helps, and that helps with the fuel economy in that we can get better electrical transfer both to the motors in the transmission and from the motors back to your battery when you're coasting and doing regen braking. Now underneath here, this is where it gets kind of cool. We have an all new transmission. But the first thing I want to tell you, Danny, is that the transmission works the same for the driver as it always has. The new Prius is drive mannerisms, and as you've seen today, right, they're the same, right, pretty much. Yeah. You can still go EV mode, right? Your gasoline engine still does most of the work at high speed. That's unchanged, but the layout of the transmission, those of you that are into this stuff, this is where it's different. The old transmissions and every other transmission we have in all our other cars are a coaxial design. Your gasoline engine sets in here sideways and right in line with the crankshaft, the old transmission had our MG1, our controller motor for the gas engine. And then we also then had our planetary gear set next door to that in the middle. And then MG2 used to live out over here on the side and that was then gear driven or belt or chain driven rather to the wheels, depending on the year and model of the car. Now here's where we've gotten different now. The new transmission is a thinner case and in fact is no wider than this little, uh, the power inverter here is that you see. Now, next to the crankshaft down there on a coax mount, we have the planetary gear setup, number, number one, right after the engine. Beyond that now is MG2, right under my hand here. And then way up here on the top, kind of tucked under this, uh, this cowl here, is, would be where MG2 lives, the main drive motor. And it's got a shaft that comes out and then is gear driven to the output shaft of your transmission, which then is linked to your wheels. So MG2 is still linked to the wheels of your car, as always. If the car's moving, it's turning but it's outside here and it has a nice gear reduction for extra leverage. H how did you feel about your bottom end acceleration today? Yeah, it's got a lot more torque to it than, uh, than previous models. Yeah, I think zero to 30 is pretty brutal, right? Yeah. That's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough car to beat across an intersection, <laughs> I guess. But we, we actually, zero to 60 on the cars is about the same, but the key here is the new transmission, we have about a 20% reduction in friction loss in the transmission. So that also helps us make a, a more efficient job of transferring power from the gas engine to the wheels and transferring power from the electric motor to the wheels, which makes us also a little bit more efficient. You tie that into the efficiency gains in the inverter, and that's how we're that uh, Prius 2 Eco is gonna get 58 in the city. But the other thing is by shrinking these components up, the 12 volt now has an easy time living under the hood, right where everybody wants it to be. So. And I'm, I'm sure that this is going to come up in, uh, in conversation because we're used to seeing uh, horsepower numbers, yes. right? And the fourth generation Prius's horsepower numbers are calculated a little differently, correct? Yes. Can you explain that? Yes. In fact, what you're going to see on paper from us is that the horsepower, the net system horsepower of the hybrid system in this car is going to be rated at 121. Now the outgoing car, the third, the third gen, has 134 net system horsepower. But there is a new rating system in Japan that we're going to adopt with the other Japanese manufacturers on how to determine power output on these blended type drive lines. 
And in the uh, case of the old car, we simply took you know battery horsepower and, and gas engine horsepower and added them up. Right. But the reality of it is, these cars, when they're operating, that very rarely uh, uh, happens. And in fact, the tuning on our new car here is a little bit different, so that it doesn't really happen at all. So we have a new uh, kind of, a, I guess, a blended average way of, of, of estimating our horsepower. I haven't seen the exact calculation yet on how we're achieving that, but it is a new testing or rating method for horsepower. And once again, then our net horsepower is going to be 121. But once again, let me ask you this. How did you feel about the driving power of the new Prius? Yeah, I, I didn't notice anything that would tell me it's, you know, that is an issue as yeah. far as horsepower. A absolutely, Danny. And in the end, in the real world out there, you know, horsepower and torque numbers on paper or, or paper numbers. But how do you feel in the seat of your pants, right? That's, <laughs> that's you know, what kind of, you know, oomph does the car have at a stop? Yeah, all that matters is real world, real world experience. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So the number is there, but don't be, don't fret on that. And I would tell everybody out there in the world not to fret about it either. Just get in the car and drive it. And I think you'll see that the, uh, the performance is really up a notch here. It surprised the heck out of me when I first test drove it last year as a prototype. I was very, very shocked at how fast this car is at low speed. And, but we're still looking at a 1.8 liter engine, correct? It's, a, it's an updated version of the engine that was in the previous Absolutely, Prius? Danny, it is. It's our 1.8 liter engine that's been in service now since the advent of the third generation. We have further refined it a bit. We have changed our EGR, our exhaust gas recirculation programming a bit to try to take advantage of that in low power conditions. Uh, the, uh, the valve springs on the cylinder heads, uh, the, uh, on top of the cylinders, our, our intake and exhaust valve springs are actually a little softer yet, which also reduces engine friction. And what we, what we shot for here was to try to increase or enhance the thermal efficiency of this engine. What we're looking to do is reduce the amount of energy in the engine that's being lost to heat and get more of it to go into power in your wheels. And in the case of the 2016 Prius's engine, this new variation, we are now at a 40% thermal efficiency rating, which is the highest thermal efficiency rating of any engine in any mass-produced vehicle that I'm personally aware of. And we beat the previous generation car, which was no slouch. It was in the 30s. But we've gone up a bit there, and that was another one of Chief Engineer Toyoshima's primary goals was to enhance the efficiency of the gas engine. Are there any other highlights that you wanted to, to point out to us while we're under the hood? Well, I think while we're here, this might be a good time to talk a little bit about our platform. You know, we, we've got some really cool platform stories here. It is, once again, our new global architecture platform. We talked a little bit about production efficiencies. But in the case of Prius, here's where your benefits come in, and I think you probably can confirm some of these based on your experience today. And that is that the chassis is 60% stiffer than the previous chassis. Did, did you definitely you feel that? tell. You can definitely tell when you're taking some of those uh, turns. Yes, absolutely. When cornering or when you're on rough road sur surfaces, the old car tended to want to flex a little bit. 60% mm -hmm. more rigidity here. That's a lot. That's a huge improvement. We've also then changed the angle of our struts on the McPherson strut on the front end to give us a little bit better leverage there and better tune that suspension. And with a more stable platform, it's easier to tune the suspension better. But then, of course, out back is the big story, right? We've got dual independent suspension back there now, a double wishbone type that is not semi-independent like the old torsion beams we had, but now fully independent. And once again, how did you feel in the corners today in the new car? Yeah, like I said, it, it, it's a whole different car. Uh, literally, a <laughs> whole different car compared to the third gen Prius uh, as far as cornering goes. Yeah, you know, quicker to react. I think it gets quicker to get back to neutral after you give it a big steering yeah. input, right? These are the A lot type of more things. steering wheel feedback compared right. to the third gen. Yeah. Absolutely. And so this is where our, our new mission for Prius really uh, comes into effect, and that is maintain all the things we used to do before that people loved, but then give them this new driving experience that's going to perhaps attract some new Prius buyers to the fold, but yet not lose the uh, appeal to, the, to our very loyal and very, uh, we're very thankful for the loyal group of Prius owners that have been out there. We don't want to disappoint them either. Now with the third gen Prius, you guys introduced the underbody paneling. Yes. Are you continuing that with this fourth gen car? In fact, we have. That was something that was actually under discussion in the design process. We considered actually shaving a few of them off, not literally shaving, but not <laughs> having them on the car to save weight. But in the end, the aerodynamics of the advantages of those were so great that we couldn't say no, we put them on, and once again, we're at 0.24 on the CD. And if you look underneath the, the new Prius, you're gonna see that it is almost completely under panels. So it's a very, very smooth area under there. We still also use vortex generators on the side to help for stability at high speed. So we're looking at managing airflow, not only for efficiency and aerodynamics, but also for vehicle stability at highway speeds too. Great. Well, I think that wraps up the front. Uh... Should we go inside yeah. and check out the in interior of the yeah. new Prius? Yeah, we've got all new styling. We've got some in-cabin technology we can talk about. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs>